Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to episode 239. Welcome back from the holidays. I'm your host, Steven. And I'm Tyler. Do you want to tell them the name of the show? Yeah, this is the Generation <laughs> Xbox podcast. It's, it's been, we, it's the holidays. Should we, well, I mean, we... considering you guys clicked on it, I assumed you knew the episode name, so we're good. Um, no, it's just, it's, you know, you take a week off and you see what happens. It all falls to shit. Uh, no, good times, good times. Hope you guys had a good, good holiday. Tyler, how about you tell us, uh, tell them where they could check us out. Well, they can check us out at generationxbox.com. That's the name of the show. Um, but generationxbox.com for all the latest Xbox news, reviews, opinions, and more from the world of Xbox. We will have tomorrow, actually, by the time you listen to this, it'll be live on the site, our year end awards. And, uh, just as, uh, just an FYI, I guess for those, you know, these are games, only games you can play on Xbox. So don't send us hate mail when you don't see Animal Crossing there, when you don't see Last of Us there, Spider-Man Miles Morales, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You won't see those on these awards. It's just games you can play on the Xbox console. So if you're an Xbox fan, and I assume you are, since you're listening to us and joining us here, um... You know, check that out and see what the best Xbox games of 2020 were. So, Stephen, based on uh, or from that, how are you? Like, it's the end of 2020, finally. <laughs> well, you know, assuming you know 2020 doesn't prestige or right? you know it, it doesn't become <laughs> 20 24 60 or 23 60, I should say, on the 24 hour mm-hmm. clock. Um, you know, there's a ton of memes about that. That's just always fun. Oh uh, yeah, 2020 is over. Holy crap, what a year. I feel like just yesterday, I remember I went to a wedding back in February, and I can still remember it to this day. Um, and it just, it feels like it was a couple weeks ago, and it was, you know, eight or ten months ago. That's insane. Um, it's been a year for a lot of people. Um, not a good yeah. year for most people. Um, yeah. Yeah, it had its ups and downs, but one thing that kept us going, I think, you know, video games, especially when you're locked inside your house. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know the Switch was really popular, um, like s- selling out a lot, especially early on. And then, of course, Animal Crossing, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. plus all the other great games that came out on just everything. Uh, Xbox Game Pass, one of the one of the goats for for new games, always fun. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been good. I I think I watched the, more movies than anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched Wonder Woman 1984. Um, the more I think about it, the more I, I'm, I'm giving it the Star Wars Episode Nine treatment, where like I yeah. can pick apart everything. So try not to look up anything, Tyler, before going in. I, I won't. Mean, not that you would, but dude, I'm the guy who went through what five months without knowing anything about Star Wars Episode Eight before I saw it. Yeah, I can't believe so. you didn't see that in theaters. That shocked me, dude. Hmm. It's coming from the big Star Wars guy. I know, uh, I know. I keep meaning to watch Soul, which supposedly is one of the best movies that Pixar has made, um, mm-hmm. or at least one that resonated with a lot of people. But I ended up watching one of my go-to genres, and that's action murder porn, um, things like John Wick. Uh, so I watched Ava. I keep, I keep getting confused because Anna also came out at some point in the mm-hmm. near future or in near future sometimes in the recent past oh my god i'm all over the near future i mean why not Uh, it was pretty good it's got colin farrell (laughs) and john malkovich and uh jessica chastain uh it was on netflix not bad Mm -hmm. not bad uh pretty fun so name name one thing that you watched in 2020 that you never would have if you know everything hadn't gone down oh i don't know if there is something that i don't maybe there's got to be something you took a chance on that you wouldn't have, wouldn't have had time for, you know, whatever. That's tough. Uh, I Come back to me on that. I cannot think okay. of one off the top of my head. Maybe horror movies. Yeah. Um, okay. I watched a lot more than usual. I think I, I bought the entire, like, Conjuring universe, including uh, The Curse of La Llorona, since that is a yeah. part of it. Um, and I haven't seen that one yet, but I've watched all the other ones. I don't think I would have elsewise, but I was in a horror movie kick in October and November. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I was too. And I actually watched all those two, except the, the last one. Yeah. I haven't seen, um, that I didn't pick that up, but yeah, I watched everything in the country universe. It was good. I mean, I mean, there were a couple in there that were sort of clunkers. Yeah. But I guess that's, that's true in any horror franchise. Yeah. Go ahead. 
I guess now that I think about it, it would be the two Vanessa Hudgens Christmas movies on Netflix that I watched, uh, okay. The Princess Switch and The Night Before Christmas. Mm-hmm. The Princess Switch was just... It's, it's not unenjoyable, but it is the easiest like movie to call exactly what's going to happen. It is so cliched and and just wonderful um but i liked the night before christmas it wasn't bad i thought i wouldn't but it was pretty funny i enjoyed it so okay i guess those two because i i usually am busy right up until christmas so i'm catching Mm -hmm. up on stuff right before christmas that i missed in the last stuff or you know last few months but since i've had more time at home thanks to covid um the stuff i would have watched i did and then i got to watch some things that i may not have if that makes sense do you have anything that you watched that you wouldn't have no, because my life honestly didn't change that much yeah. um, from a like work life balance standpoint. Um, it changed from a stress standpoint involving work, right? Sure. But because I directly had to deal with, you know, the people who were sick or thought they were, or might be, or had exposure or whatever, right? So um, that way that gets to you after a while, especially when people, you see people just making really not good decisions. But. Um, so no, I didn't have a lot of time for extra stuff, but I did, what it did do is make me value, like, um, value the, the entertainment options I do have, Mm. you know, um, and, and appreciate them more. Like I, I really appreciated the baseball season this year, even though it ended very poorly for me again. But uh, I, I had a lot of fun with that, even with no fans in the stands. But, you know, I'll be 100% honest. Like, I know everybody feels like we have to pander and say, oh, it's not the same without the fans. I, I have, Steven, I've never turned on a sporting event to watch the fans, ever. Yeah. So, does it add to the atmosphere? Sure. But ultimately, can I appreciate the athleticism and what's going on without it? Yes. I do. Um, I do think. I mean, so, uh, you know, I, in the NBA, Stephen, if I had to pick a team, it's the Timberwolves. So I'm used to watching empty arenas. And, sure. You know. um, I could see it mattering though for hockey, football, and then wrestling. And you could argue whether wrestling is a sport or not. It's not, but it is fun. And we definitely that actually that yeah. is the thing I watch that I would not have if there it wasn't go. for the pandemic. We mm-hmm. like since there was nothing going on in the middle of summer it was like we started with we wrestlemania watching, yeah and then we were watching like old raws while we were also watching the new raws and smackdowns because there was nothing <laughs> i forgot so that about that yeah kind of thing. yeah so um, by but, the way i do agree that like 1997 98 99 raw so much better than 2020 sure but it's hard to judge because of the lack of fans but yeah um but sure so I was watching right before there was a pay-per-view tables, ladders, and chairs on the Sunday before Christmas. And uh, right before that was like a little – Kevin Owens was on talking about his journey through whatever because um, he was featuring in the main event. So I think that's why. And he mentioned that all the bumps and stuff they take like hurt more because it doesn't have the fans like bringing the adrenaline or the guy, you know, getting the adrenaline from the fans. And so I could see that being the case in hockey and football as well. Um, where, you know, you get the, you get tackled and it doesn't hurt as bad because you have adrenaline when there's thousands of people cheering, but when it's empty and quiet, I could see some of those, you know, the licks and the shots hurting all the much more. So I, I could see the mm-hmm. difference there. Baseball is not contact. So, I mean, I guess the only thing no. that might change is hit by pitches. Well, um, and yeah. maybe some of those diving runs into walls, uh, might sure. hurt a little, little less when you have, you know, 30,000 people cheering for that may, mm-hmm. may, amazing catch you just made rather than it just being dead silent you know unless you're a twins player and just ran into the wall and the ball bounced away and well that also happened to the uh the angels joe adele like to you know not catch the ball in right field but he's like no i think this should be a home run (laughs) (laughs) so sure um on the wrestling thing i uh i just wanted to call out that 2020 saw book almost bookends um both the greatest match in the history of professional wrestling. Sure. The Boneyard match. Voted match of the year, by the way. And um, the winner of that match finally called a career. One of the greatest of all time. And I don't think you can debate that. Um, whether he's the greatest of all time, that's a whole other argument. But one of, for sure. So... 
That was cool. And um, from a hockey standpoint, because I'm sure people like, really, you're talking about wrestling here. But from a hockey standpoint, because that's what you came to listen to, uh, I thought they did a fantastic job with the, the bubble playoffs. Yeah, I thought In terms of presentation and feel. Yeah, I thought basketball was fine, too. And I honestly, like, when I watch NBA games right now, I don't even notice it anymore. I just don't notice it. Yeah. I'm sure I'll notice it when fans come back a year from now or hopefully less. I didn't but, I didn't notice it in the Premier League either. Uh, obviously, I watch yeah. Arsenal play every week, whether good or bad. Um, mm-hmm. Usually bad. Though they have won two in a row, so I guess yay. Um, but, yeah, when they, when they didn't have fans, they didn't really care. Uh, when they when they brought the fans back, but like in the limited capacity, and they stopped mm-hmm. pumping the crowd noise, then it was noticeable. Because mm-hmm. when it's like a thousand fans rather than twenty thousand fans cheering, mm-hmm. it is way quiet, quieter. Obviously, um, so that's noticeable. And I know we're a Xbox podcast, and we just spent the mm-hmm. last ten minutes talking about sports. But you know, what are you gonna do? Oh, you gonna do? Um, so speaking well, of games, though, Tyler, or do you have? I have a question for you, and I I want our our fans to reach out to you, listeners, readers, reach out on Twitter at uh, GenerationX underscore box. Let us know. Everybody talks about, like, there's so many bad things in 2020, and that's true, right? Um, But, like, there were good things, too. Um, Reach out. Let us know. Like, what's some good you saw that happened? And it can be video game related. It can be not video game related. It doesn't matter. Just keep it clean. Um... For, and, and I want you to answer this too, Stephen. For me, like one of the coolest memories I have of the year, and the last day on sports for me, I promise. But, um, at least for a few minutes. But when the uh, the practice, the Zamboni driver, the practice goaltender for the Toronto Maple Leafs, got to dress as the emergency goalie for the Carolina Hurricanes in an NHL game in February and beat the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, was super cool. And just, it's such a good story. It was so much fun. It was helped by the fact that Graham was on the show then, and he's a Maple Leaf super fan. So we're able to bring that up a time or two. <laughs> Do you remember it was, we, one, it was one of the best stories ever. We that, rewatched that game. Um, we did, because once the pandemic started, NHL um, opened up their app where you could go back and watch any game from the season. Yeah. So, we, of course, chose that one in, like, live message Graham on, like, Facebook Messenger with pictures of it. I think he really appreciated that. I'm sure he did. Um, <laughs> one of the things that may not... Uh, so, obviously, we're a video game show. I'm trying to think how to word this here um, without wanting to, like, offend people. Because um, I'm just going to say it, and if you get offended, tough shit. Um so th- this year, obviously, I spend more time at home, and it made me appreciate like video games a lot more because I, they kind of lost some of their their luster when you have the ability to play them, you know, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week if you're not working due to the pandemic. Um, but they're so great when you come out, come home from work, especially if you have like one of those really long days and really crappy days, and then you get to uh, you know to play some games and obviously that was a terrible segue and i apologize but we're we're switching into the video game mode there Tyler. okay go um, for it and so yeah i i just say like this pandemic did help me appreciate games even more than i already did it just reminded mm. me of how much i enjoy them as a hobby especially when like i have to work and, and do all this this stuff like now that so, i'm at home it, it you know mm. it, it's not the same i i think uh I agree with you. And, you know, I remember pre-pandemic, like, we would sit in a party in Xbox um, and party chat and just, like, play nothing but chat for, like, three and a half hours. Right? Yeah. And we start playing a lot more games lately, and, you know, sometimes it's super fun and sometimes it's super not. And, you know, but that's not because of the game. It's because of how we're playing. Um, But I've come to appreciate that much more. And, you know, when I get home from work, I'll um, play a couple games of, you know, whether it's NHL or Call of Duty or whatever. Still, I save the narrative, like, really deep experiences for the weekends when I can actually dedicate, like, a few hours to it. But I love those, like, quick games. And I've fallen in love with some franchises that 
um, quite frankly, I lost interest in over time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, to, to have that sort of sparked again, um, romantic, I know, is uh, is pretty fun. And, you yeah. know, it's, it's made me appreciate that definitely as well. So, no, and, you know, there are lots of good games this year. Should we talk about some of them? Yeah, I was going to say, so you um, mm-hmm. you didn't really get to, as you mentioned, take any time off. Like, you just worked through it. Yep. Um, and so you, you know, you definitely pr- appreciate the games you, you got to play probably more than uh-huh. even I did. Uh, what were some of your favorite games from this year? So, <sighs> controversial as it is, I do like the story quite a bit in Cyberpunk 2077. That's not to say that any of the stuff around it is excusable in any way. It's not. Um, I, I think that I think the conversation around that game has really gotten muddied in the last week or so because we've started to incorporate... We've started to just blend everything together um, between the ethical things and the game performance things, whereas I think those are probably two separate conversations. But... I, I still think in terms of, like, on the Xbox Series X, it works okay. It's it's not perfect. It has crashed my box a couple times, but I, I do I enjoy the story there. I enjoy the world. Um, but honestly, for me, like, the, the lifesaver this year has been those games that I can jump into for 20, 30 minutes to an hour at a time. And, uh, and just, like, detach for a little bit. So... I, Steve and I live super close to where I work, so I can come home for lunch. I let my dog out, and I play a game or two, you know, and then I go back. Um, MLB The Show in the spring, when all this started, was a lifesaver for me. And I know it's not an Xbox game, but tough. It will be next year. Maybe. We hope. (laughs) We we haven't heard it's not yet, and all indications say it will be, so hopefully. I'm going to be really bummed if it's not. Mm -hmm. But that was a lifesaver for me. I invested so much time into that. Um, NHL 21 this fall, same thing. Um, I wish I liked my Nintendo Switch more. And I can't quite pinpoint, like you've asked me many times, I can't pinpoint why I don't. Like, you know, I went through like a year where I didn't even know where it was. Yeah. So, I wish I liked it more. Um, as much as my uh, uh, PSVR, but uh, yeah, I, those two for me for sure. Um, Ori is a fantastic game. Well, let me throw that out there. Ori's really, really good. Uh, I'm, I'm bummed that we didn't get a Forza this year, and I'm bummed we didn't get Halo. But uh, there's some games I definitely had fun with. How about you? Yeah, Ori at the start of the year, um, it had its issues with frame rate. It wasn't as bad as um, I think people playing on the base Xboxes for me because I was on the One X, but it was still bad. But they fixed it pretty quickly. Um, so I, I did enjoy it when I played it six months later, um, you know, like a month ago. Uh, but that was a good game. Animal Crossing, holy crap, I put a lot of hours into that. Uh, every day, played every day for like two months straight and then just stopped and haven't touched it since. But those two months were great. Uh, we played a little PGA Tour, Tyler, and MLB The Show, both fun. Uh, yeah, PGA game. Tour is actually a good game. It's yeah. just a little too simmy for me. Yeah. Um, so. FIFA, always a, a fun thing. Yeah. I just play the career mode by myself. That's the only sports game I do that Same here. Um, yep, same here. But I enjoyed that. This time I actually made a create a character, or like create a player. And oh, did you? And through that on the on the xbox one and then now i just started my franchise up as arsenal on the series because okay. they're different games okay um but that's that uh tetris effect connected was fantastic uh i got really addicted to that for like two weeks and then stopped mm. <laughs> but it was fun slay the spire slay. as well uh and that didn't come out i just played it a lot again this year so you know okay. what are you gonna do um, but those Tetris really Effect it. super fun, and I actually forgot about it. So let me throw that in there too for mine. Um, yeah, it was it was the game I couldn't put down when I first got the Series X. Yeah, it does do a good job of making like of just being absolutely gorgeous with the colors and the music and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so so fun. 
Uh, so let me ask you this. Let's let's skew negative here because that's always fun. Um, what's a game that you were really hyped for this year and you were just disappointed and you didn't love it? So I, I know the obvious answer is Cyberpunk, but that wasn't because I actually lost my hype back in February probably. And so I was just like, all right, it's going to come out and I'm going to play it. And I actually enjoyed it more than I thought I would because I was kind of worried that I would hate it. Um, just knowing myself, uh, I was like, I don't know, shooters, sometimes I don't love them. But I, I have very much enjoyed it, so that's not mine. Mine would be Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I I liked Odyssey and I liked Origins. I My favorite part of Assassin's Creed is being an assassin. Um, and so I like the older games better, but Origins and Odyssey did have where you could sneak through. Uh, in in Valhalla, you, you can't. You're a Viking. You're supposed to, you know, bang your drum, blow your horn, and go, you know, yeah. raid, pillage, plunder. You're welcome. Sure. Um, so, and that can be fun. And I know some people say it's, like, one of the best RPGs. I, to me, it's just, I it, do, it does not click with me. I played yeah. multiple hours of it, and I just, I, I don't think it's going to. And I'm very frustrated by that because i want to like it so mm -hmm. much and i just don't what yeah. about you so i agree with you um i'm not gonna like go in depth on that because i'll say all the same things you just did um i i was so excited for it like assassin's creed has this way of making you super excited for the game every year until it comes out then you're like oh this is cool and there have been a couple great ones right but for me not to go back to sports games again but it was madden this year like you, you know there have been years where I just put a ton of time into Madden. Yeah. And this was not that. Like, it's disappointing. And, and, and I reviewed the game on our site, and I, I scored it pretty well. But there's something there that doesn't keep me coming back. And it, it's hard to pinpoint. I think the intentions were in the right place with the, the new mode, the yard. But it just, for me, doesn't really do anything. Yeah, I, I loaded that game up, and I'm colorblind, and oh my god, I couldn't see anything from about anything in that. So I just immediately in put the it yard, down. Yeah. I, everyone's wearing whatever hell color they want, and it's all super mm -hmm. colorful, and I can't tell, you know, the ground yeah. from the people half the time, and it's not fun, yep. so it sucks. Um, yep. I wonder, well, though, yeah, Tyler, yeah. if you didn't enjoy yeah. it, because usually, like, Madden comes out, right around the time of like training camp and stuff um sure and since you weren't excited for football i wonder if that affected your madden because you were excited for baseball I mean, and i know you were really excited to play the show and so i wonder if that has something to do with it yeah i mean the the show is objectively i think a better game too not sure and I think their their quote ultimate team, their Diamond Dynasty, is just super well done. Yeah, because you can get good players without spending money, just by playing. And you know the reward. That's true. That you're working towards, right? A lot of the time. Yeah. So you can say, "I want this guy. I want Kirby Puckett, the greatest player to ever play." Uh huh. Not named Mike Trout or literally a lot of other people. <laughs> so, um. But I know that if I want that, I, there are these specific things I need to accomplish, right? Sure. And and that's really fun, too, because you're, what you're doing has more meaning then. Because you're not just doing it to have a chance to get something good. You're doing it to get a specific thing that you really want to help build the type of team that you want to have. So it's much less about, like, see, I never used, like, like the auction house or whatever they call it in Diamond Dynasty. Like, I, I, well, I take that back. I did. But very rarely compared to how much I would normally use it in Madden Ultimate Team. So, I I think it's just it's just built so much better. Um, and and when we talk about like the yard, clearly it's a it's a way to try to tap into um, what's there with like the park and NBA Two K and, and World of Chell and NHL. It's not the same. It's just as, and I think World of Child has some issues in, in NHL. I think there's ways to make that more of like a complete world where you actually feel like you're part of it, you know? Um, but I, I don't know. I, I had some issues with, with uh, 
with that so madden was ultimately pretty uh pretty disappointing for me um in the long run it just didn't keep me so anyway well so uh yeah well, i was just gonna say speaking of sports you want to take us into speaking of sports sure steve do you know that the nhl's back soon yeah it's in fact two weeks from tomorrow which is wednesday the nhl returns with a 56 game schedule and uh, just a ton of a ton of fun around the corner. I'm excited to watch my Minnesota Wild this year, not because I think they're going to be super good, but because they have actually a young core of talent right now that's going to be really exciting to watch and really fun. So, really excited for that. Stephen, who just uh, top of your head right now? Who is your pick to win the Stanley Cup? Oh my gosh, that's so difficult. Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Even without Kucherov for the whole year, okay. I don't know. I haven't really been yeah. following, so I don't know who's good. That's fair. I mean, that's fine. Um, I don't have an answer for that either, necessarily. I guess if I had to pick right now, I'd say Colorado. Who won it last year? I have no idea. Tampa. Okay. Then they're not repeating. Yeah. Uh, let's say the Pittsburgh Penguins. They're always up for a good. Okay. All right. That's my team. No, Sounds I mean, good. I don't like so, them. I, that's just my pick, <laughs> I should say. You know what else is going on this week? even college football. And, there it is. You know. Um, college football is heading into the bowl season. There's some huge matchups this weekend, um, including the Rose Bowl, which is now in Texas. Then it's not the Rose Bowl. Correct. I agree with you. But well, for all you know, we're calling it the Rose Bowl, so fine. Between the uh, Alabama Crimson Tide, led by Coach Nick Saban. <laughs> if if you didn't see Nick Saban had a tantrum about not being called Coach today. And uh, really playing to that one? That is uh, Ohio State. I don't care. I don't know. It's Notre Dame. I don't know who the hell they're playing. I think it's Notre Dame. It's Notre Dame. I remember seeing a video of some, like, mom Notre Dame fan get really upset that she had to play. They had to play uh, Bama. I thought that was funny. Alabama? They should be happy they're in it. They got waxed by Clemson in the ACC title game. But the... But the the final four was pretty much decided after week eight. Wait, who got whacked by Clemson? Notre Dame. Oh, I didn't know they even played. I didn't know that Notre Dame was in the ACC. I haven't been following football at all. So Notre Dame was in the ACC for just this year for football. Okay. They're they're in the ACC for other sports like basketball. They're a permanent member. But for football, they're normally independent. They joined the ACC this year because you can't play an independent schedule in COVID time. Sure. So, um, yeah, they did that. So they were in the ACC title game. They beat Clemson earlier this year without Trevor Lawrence when he was out when he had COVID. So, all right, it was a rematch. But anyway, uh, NFL regular season is also finishing up. See what the playoff picture becoming more clear. Your Colts need some help. Yeah, they shit the bed. Um, yeah, it was rough. So there's only one place that has you covered, and one place we trust, and that's BetOnline.ag. Sign up today for a free account, free account at BetOnline.ag and use the promo code CLNS50. For your 50% welcome bonus. Again, a 50% welcome bonus just for using that code CLNS50. All right, so don't sit on the sidelines any longer. We want you to get in on the action. Now it's a super exciting time to get in. The World Juniors are going on for hockey. I've been super addicted to that. Uh, if you're a hockey fan, it's really great to watch. Um, get in on the action. Don't forget to use that promo code CLNS50. To receive a 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit at Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. And Steven, um, my Vikings are not going to the playoffs because they are complete poo. Yeah. Well, so Tyler, what is coming up in a couple days? New Year's? Yeah. And what do people normally do on New Year's? Um, New Year's Eve. No, 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 no. I mean, smashed. like for New Year's, everyone does a list of something. What's that called? Oh yeah, resolution. Yeah, they make a resolution. So, well, I have an idea. They buy a lot of yogurt and then throw it away after two weeks. <laughs> or yeah, get a gym membership. <laughs> Instead of doing something dumb like that and wasting your money, why don't you make the resolution to stop wiping your butt? with toilet paper and instead buy yourself a bidet from hello tushy because it is the most amazing thing in the entire world let me tell you and i know i know for years bidets have cast thousands of dollars and you know we're only available to the richest of a-holes but now you can get yours um 
for just $79. It attaches to your existing toilet. It doesn't require electricity or additional plumbing. It, it's really simple to set up. I, I did it in like 10 minutes and I know nothing about like plumbing. So let, let me tell you, it's, it's good. Uh, but it'll cut your toilet paper use by 80%. So the Hello Tissue cut your toilet paper use by 80% and it pays for itself basically based on all the toilet paper you're saving. And let me, I, I can't stress this enough. It really is amazing. I love mine. I can't imagine not having it. Whenever I move, I'm going to take it off and I'm going to take it with me to the next place and it's going to stay with me forever because it, it is just, it is, it is the greatest because with Hello Tushy, you don't wipe it all. It's your new hands-free butt buddy. Uh, every Hello Tushy bidet comes with a 60 day risk risk-free happy butt guarantee and a 12-month warranty uh so that's great so right now you can get 10 percent off plus free shipping right now at hellotushy.com slash hub so that's hellotushy.com slash hub for 10 percent off and free shipping once again hellotushy.com slash hub it's phenomenal make it your resolution it is something you're going to stick with and you're never going to want to change trust me get yours today all right so speak well done. Yeah, so speaking of resolutions, Tyler, uh, we're gonna yeah. do ours next week for next for, week for but, video games. Yeah, before we turn the page on 2020, though. Yes, I think we have one more bit of business to get through, and that's our awards for all the video games on Xbox for the year 2020. And uh, it's been a fun year. Let's put a bow on it. And I mean fun very sarcastically. But let's put a bow on that on this year by talking about the things that actually did stand out and were pretty awesome. So let's run through our awards for 2020 for Xbox and games you can play on the Xbox. So the first category, Stephen, is the I'm really glad this came out in 2020 award. And what this is is like the game that you really helped you kind of get through these crappy, um, I've heard some people call them uncertain times. <laughs> yeah. Um, uncharted waters. Unprecedented times. Unprecedented times. But don't worry, Hyundai is with you. <laughs> Still the greatest so, moment of 2020, those commercials. Yeah. Or like when Applebee's declared the pandemic over in like August. Yeah, those were fun too. Yeah. Anyway, the I'm really glad this came out in 2020 award. Our nominees are Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Dirt 5, which was a fun racer, uh, Time Eater, Moving Out, Tetris Effect Connected, and Two Point Hospital. So the winner with 62.5% of the vote from our staff is Ori and the Will of the Wisps. So, um, Congratulations to Ori. It's a great game. And it's it's a it's an easy way to get lost in a game that's just visually gorgeous. Also rewards, you know, some skill and all that stuff. What are your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I, I liked it. I don't know if it's the game that I would pick for 2020 because, you know, sure. since the world went to hell in a handbasket, uh, the last thing mm -hmm. I want to do was play a game that, you know, is pretty depressing at times. Mm -hmm. Um and granted, I haven't beaten it yet, but you know what I mean. Uh, I yeah. guess it kind of mirrors. I, I assume it ends happily. So, you mm -hmm. know, that could be a mirror to real life. It, it is a great game. So, you know, congrats to that for winning our award. Um, so what would your pick be here? Uh, it's it's tough. Tetris Effect Connected came out so late into the pandemic. I don't know if... Mm -hmm. it, I think Two Point Hospital or Moving Out would get my vote. Both of them are no. really fun. One is really fun with people. One is really fun by yourself. They're both. Sure. Is, moving Out's like Overcooked, but you're moving uh, a moving company. And then uh, Two Point Hospital is like a simulation, but like joking mm -hmm. parody game. Both of them are great. Okay. All right. But yeah. Awesome. All right. So um, Touch Respect Connected was second. Okay. With uh, over 30% of the vote. So congratulations to all the games on the nominee list. Um, you're on it for a reason. You all made awesome games. So um, thank you for the hard work you put in. And uh, congratulations on making an awesome game. So Steven, sports ball of the year. This is our best sports game. Not racing, but sports. Our nominees. NHL 21. Tony Hawks Pro Skater 1 and 2. NBA 2K21, FIFA 21, and finally PGA 2K21. 
the winner with 68% of the vote, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Yeah, not surprising. Not not surprising at not all. Not my cup um, of tea there, because uh, I don't have the nostalgia for it. Um, and mm-hmm. I prefer the, the more open world of the later games and the skate games. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But it was good. I mean, I yeah. Yeah. So we had uh, almost every every almost every finalist was represented in the vote, which was which is good because all these games are good. And second place though was FIFA Twenty One. I think that's what I voted for, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So best shooter is a norm. What would normally be a pretty intense category, I think, um, really got hurt by the fact that there was no Battlefield this year and no Halo. So, the nominees, Destiny 2, Beyond Light, Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War, Doom Eternal, and Super Hot Mind Control Delete, which was quietly one of the best games to come out on Xbox this year. So, the winner, overwhelmingly, Steve, 87% of the vote, Doom Eternal. Yeah, not surprising again. Not a surprise, right? It's really good. It's really well done. It took a lot of what the first one did right and just kind of grew on that, built on it. So, um, well deserved. Congratulations to the team there, and uh, hopefully the next one's an Xbox exclusive, right? Maybe it could be. So, up next, uh, the just pure fun category, and that is what it sounds like. It's you know, hey, this game is just awesome and fun to play, and you get lost in it, just kind of having that joy of playing. Our nominees, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, Destiny 2, Beyond Light, Super Mega Baseball 3, Immortals, Phoenix Rising, and Two Point Hospital. The winner here in a close one with uh, over 30% of the vote is Immortals, Phoenix Rising. Steven, what were your thoughts on that game? Yeah, it's uh, it's very good, especially if you like like Breath of the Wild. Um, it's got the same climbing type element. Uh, the fighting's really fun. I love the dialogue and the story and the, I don't know. I, I love Greek mythology, and so any more. I mean, any time that that's in a game, you know, that's my cup of tea. But I think it's funny and charming, and I don't know. I just really like it. So, and I've had a lot a blast with it. So that's why I voted for it. Um, and I'm glad it won. All right, I'm glad it won too. Again, congratulations to all the nominees. A um, lot of representation there for all the all the nominees in the voting. So, great job, everybody. It was a tough tough decision. It was a really close vote. Best story. This is a category I care a lot about because outside of the sports games that I talk about once in a while, um, I care a lot about story in games. Like you can have great graphics and action, but if the story is just dumb then uh, you, you lose me a little bit. So our nominees for best story. Cyberpunk 2077. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Call of the Sea. Watch Dogs Legion. Wasteland 3. And Immortals Phoenix Rising. The winner, even with 46% of the vote, is Wasteland 3. Another close one. Yeah, but Wasteland Three takes best story, uh, well deserved. I know, a t- I know there are people on our staff that absolutely love this game, really, really love it. So, you know, kudos to them. They came out in support, and uh, the game deservedly gets recognized for uh, doing a great job and having a great story. So, all right, Stephen, are you ready? I guess. Game of the year. So we have. Six nominees for Game of the Year on Xbox. Cyberpunk 2077. Doom Eternal. Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Yakuza Like a Dragon. Wasteland 3. And Gears Tactics. So I'm going to count us up from third. Okay? Okay. All right. So we had a tie for third place between... Gears Tactics and Wasteland 3. Um, two good games. Yeah, Gears. Both deserving of recognition. Gears Tactics, I think, flew under the radar. It, it is canon, obviously, in this Gears game. Um, but I think it's a mm-hmm. prequel to the 
the first game, and it's really fun, especially if you like the XCOM stuff. Uh, definitely don't sleep on that. And, you know, if you have Game Pass, it's available for free, so kind of yep. worth it. Yep. Second place, um, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Okay. So, again, we've talked about that at length, right? Um, it's a good game, great game, um, deserving of recognition, so uh, congratulations on, on being the runner-up there. The game of the year, Stephen, um, little to no surprise here. Uh, one of the best shooters, I think, released in quite some time. Um, Doom Eternal wins game of the year on Xbox from our staff. Yeah, our staff loves that game. Um, they do. They really do. I like congratulations to Doom and what it does. It does really well. Um, like especially like for shooters, I just don't get it. I guess. Um, as a shooter, it's really smooth, and yeah. you know it's it's kind of fun. Um, but after I don't know, I played one level of it, and it just all felt the same. And so I never. Maybe I should give it another chance because I heard you know, more. You know what I feel? In a way, Stephen Doom is kind of that, and I mean this in the best possible light. By the way, when I say what I'm about to say, but Doom is that like mindless action fun? You know? Yeah, I know they added more puzzles and oh. platforming into it, and I, I guess I just hadn't yep. gotten there yet. Um, and so mm. maybe if I do, it'll be cool. Like, I like the set yeah. pieces. I liked, I, I don't give two hex about the story. Um, but the, the shooting's yeah. kind of fun. Maybe I'll give that another chance. I don't know. I just, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. But congrats to that. I know our staff so, loved it. So I'm yeah. glad the people that love it, love it. And, you know, it mm -hmm. was a good game for what it is. I just, it, it's not my thing. I don't understand it. Sure. So. No, and, and I think it's very deserving, though. It's a great game, and not every game has to be for everybody, right? So, um, and we've said many, many times on this here show that uh, you can not, something can be not for you and still be great, right? Yeah, some of um, us have said that on the show for sure, yeah. <laughs> or at least understood that. Like. Yeah. Yes. Some of us have not. But... Yeah, I think uh, Doom definitely deserves the, the accolades. Like you said, our staff loves the game. Um, I, our writers rave about this thing left and right. And deservedly so. So congratulations to Doom Eternal for winning Game of the Year for 2020 on Xbox. So yeah, from Stephen, that wraps up our awards. And, and by the way, check out on the website for more kind of detail in each one. And, you know, we'll have all the winners there. But that'll be there by the time you listen to this. So, so, so Tyler, I'm going to give you a curveball here real quick. Yeah. Um, okay. And I, I feel like there's one obvious answer, but maybe there's something I'm missing and that you will call out. Um, what do you think? So 2020 wrapped up. What was the biggest news story Xbox related um, for Xbox? <laughs> what was the biggest news story of the, of the year for them? Um. Okay, so I'm going to take out the Series X launch because I feel like that's naturally the biggest story for both major Oh, I was makers. not thinking of that at all, so that, that's different than what um, I was thinking. For me, it was... So, for me, the biggest story for Xbox, and I think what I would argue is their biggest success in 2020, is not a single event but more of a almost year long thing where they prove to be really adaptable, able to recover from missteps, which they haven't always had, you know, the ability to do and really deliver a compelling case for a new console in an environment that was completely foreign um, they weren't able to roll out anything regarding Series X in any way that they had originally planned on doing it. Outside of the Game Awards last year. Right? When they first showed it off. Sure. But everything beyond that for the year was done in a way that I promise you was different from how they really wanted to do it. Yeah, that's a fair point. And I think one and, that's easily lost, because I, 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 was, I yeah. wasn't even thinking about that either. And uh, no, you bring up a, a very valid point. Um, they did have to adapt on the fly, and they did a good job. I, I do think they... And, and they, had, they had missteps. That July 23rd one was not great. 
Yes. Right? And I think they kind of over promised um, sometimes, or they maybe yeah. it was a, a us building our expectations. I, I think it was the high, fans. But I um, think no. Yeah. See, I was gonna I was gonna clarify that I think sometimes I think people like Aaron Greenberg um, tended to imply certain things um, and get and get people's yeah. hopes up, and then they just that's brought out also fair. Shooters after shooters, and you know when you're well joking known as the bro shooter racer box like that that doesn't really do it for you vroom vroom pew pew they did have fable so i gotta give them that to be fair steven i I think they kind of followed this formula especially aaron and we love aaron right but he'd get the hype raised up and then about a week before the event the managing expectations would begin Uh, it was that's what it was so like get everybody like foaming at the mouth basically and then come out and be like well everybody calm down it's not gonna be everything you're thinking so yeah right i so yeah, i think that was true i think there were two stories that were tied for first one was definitely beneficial to xbox and one was not uh we'll start with the bad and end with the good so the bad was the 23rd is more specifically halo infinite and just the shit show that that was um and look can, can i ask you a quick question yeah. before you go yeah, into yeah. that why do you think that one's worse than the one before it what, what was the one before it the indie one the one before it was the third party one which was all like really um there weren't any big hitters there other than assassin's creed but they promised gameplay and there wasn't any yeah, but I mean, it was independent. So, like, how mad could it, you know, I get and, on that. And remember, the quality of the of the video was pretty poor. Yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. Like, it, was, it was. was like running like. It was yeah. It was like thirty dollar webcams. Yes, it would talk about from Target. You know. Yeah. yeah. The, no, that was a brutally produced one. But it, again, it was third party. So how you know it. It's hard to knock that too much. You, th- Halo is supposed to be your flagship title, and it looked bad in a lot of ways, and it had a lot of mm-hmm. issues. And I think, I think if Xbox should learn anything from the Cyberpunk release, it's that they should stop trying to make Halo Infinite work on the Xbox One and Xbox One X and Xbox One S. I agree. Um, I don't think yep. they will, and I think that's going to be. We a both sang a completely opposite tune about six months ago. Yes, um, it, it so, would be a mistake, mm-hmm. and I know there are people like it's struggling to get the Series X right now. But by the time the game comes out, and probably November, it should be available, like the new consoles, if you have the the cash for it. And I, I just don't think well, they some, should hurt the game to put it out on old consoles. That's just my opinion. Something to keep in mind too is that all access is still a thing. Yes. Like for people that don't want to drop five hundred bucks in one shot or five fifty after tax, right? Like all access is still an option. So for people that just really want a series, I X. think that was the worst thing Xbox had yeah. happened to them. But I think they managed to recover by buying Zenimax Studios and getting all of the properties in there of. Um, but that's the being mm-hmm. the biggest one. That gives you some of the games that you so desperately need. And we'll see if they become exclusives. I know Sony fans are praying that they're not going to be exclusive. Um, but Microsoft wanted to spend $7.5 billion or whatever the final total was to not have those mm-hmm. games be exclusive, I don't think. But maybe I'm wrong. I so don't know. What, but I think that yeah. was helpful for Xbox. Mm-hmm. Really hurt the gaming world. But for Xbox, it's good. I... I, I want to throw one more thing in on 2020 in the gaming world. And I think we learned what both of the major two console makers are really good at in terms of marketing and not good at. And like the, the here's, here's what I hope Xbox learns going forward. And here's what they did really, really well. They broke from the model of always having a super big show to show off stuff for an hour and a half. Right. And then, and they broke from that and went to more of a drip of information. And they did that so well. Like, think back to like March through in right, May. Right, they didn't know how to finish. No, but here's the thing. Like, I think they fell back into the trap of trying to do it the way PlayStation does it, which is having these showcases. Right. 
and building up hype to this like impossible degree. Well, I think so- whereas if they had just stuck with what works for them, which is just every so often this drip of information just getting out there to keep hype high. Like remember, do you remember back in like May when PlayStation fans were so frustrated? Yes, because they weren't getting any information. And Xbox like was throwing stuff out almost weekly. So, like Xbox did so well at that, and I think they need to realize that they're always going to do shows like E3, no doubt about it. But maybe get away from this. Don't think you have to play by the rules PlayStation has set, or that PlayStation f- excels at. We'll put it that way. You can do it in a way that works best for you, even if it's totally different. And I think they need to take that and learn from that and just continue doing it rather than getting caught in that trap of like, we need to have this stream for an hour and a half because they're not very good at those. Well, that's what I was saying It's the reason it works for Sony is because they have some badass looking trailers and like gameplay for their top tier games, but all their games are different. Whereas with Xbox, it seems like it's just a shooter after a shooter. I swear I counted like seven shooters in a row on that June event. Um, Might've been the May one. I don't know. Uh, but that's their issue is it's all the games feel the same. So it doesn't, Yeah, that's their problem. So you can do that if you stretch it out over a long time. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, find what works for you and don't, yeah, don't feel a need to do it. If you're going to have the same five types of games, like the same games, the same genre. Yep. Um, speaking though mm-hmm. of, of E3, I think we also learned that E3 should not be a one person ran show. I don't think that was a success <laughs> or one media yeah, outlet. Either yeah. of those. I think we learned that E3 was an important thing to happen. I think mm-hmm. I've said it before. And I mean, obviously we're a little biased cause we're a smaller site. So we want there to be three. So we get some coverage of some stuff, but I do think like your, your big gaming companies of the world just do not show some of the smaller games that we've, talked about before on the show like Ari and the Secret of the Seasons uh-huh. we saw at E3 last year um, Chris Tales same, same thing you know so I, I, I think E3 is a thing I don't think it should be run by one person and one person's vision isn't gonna like there's gonna be a lot of things that are cut that you know people want might want to see but didn't know they want to see and you don't get that with you know one person deciding everything so I think we, we learned that that should not be a thing that happens we'll see if that's the case but hopefully yeah. Um, so I I agree with you. I think we learned that E3 is really important for the business and not just from a standpoint of getting eyes on games, but also allowing there to be multiple voices um, talking about them. Yeah. And I think that, you know, like you said, and I don't want to turn this into a plug for us, right? But it's a situation where you hear gamers so often honestly bitch about the big three or four and how they cover games, right? It's either one is just clickbait with videos and blah, 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 and and no substance. Or the other one is just politically driven and, you know, agenda driven and whatever. And then varying degrees of all that in between. But at the same time, they're saying we E3 should go away and it should all be digital. I think we have to stop and and understand the fact that making it all digital is not a way to have direct communication between publishers and fans. I mean, in a way that is, but that already happens at E3. It's called the briefings and whatever, right? It's what that's going to do is make it so that only like a handful of media outlets control the narrative and look there's people at every single one that do great work um but there's people on our site that do great work and if you go look at stealing the reviews we've done we've done like 90 reviews this year okay of games and right around that and the vast vast majority of them are not triple a games they are independently developed games that costs forty dollars or less. We shine a light on that, and we review the big games too. But we're not driven by that, and we will never be driven by any, you know, need to have more access or B 
because we're friends with somebody or anything like that. We're going to be honest and we're not always right, but we're going to be honest and we're going to try to do the right thing. And if you want that, and if you want there to be multiple voices and you want outlets to cover games and not agendas using games as a platform to talk about them, then you should be against D3 going away. Because what E3 does is it allows sites like ours and many, many others to have direct access to everyone in the same week. To be quite frank, we can't afford to fly to like 12 different events throughout the year at different publishers and different developers and whatnot, right? We can't. We can't afford to send our, our writers to Neither. those. But we can go to E3. We can go to that and get everybody together at the same place. Yeah, so that's our uh, our little soapbox spiel there. Um, there you go. Yeah. But, you know, if you guys made it this far, thank you. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's... 2020 was a year that existed. Um, we'll see if 2021's going to be better. Our problems don't end because the date changes or the year changes, but... They don't? No, despite what some people might want... Um, because they're scared or they're tired or whatever. It's not how the real world works. But what if I run the Am or not Amazon, the Netflix stream of Burning 2020, like all day tomorrow? No, it doesn't work still. Um, okay. But yeah, 2021, there will be more games. Um, I think we're going to start seeing some of the... Uh, the, the pandemic issues. Uh, sorry for that noise in the background. Apologies. Somebody's shoveling right outside my window. <laughs> is that what that is? Um, but anyways. I wonder who that could be. I think we're going to see anyway. some um, like delays and just less games coming out in the, in the future because of like pandemic changing timelines. But we'll see. Uh, 2020 mm -hmm. will be a new year. At least, at least there's that. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for being with us through 2020. Uh, if, if you're just new this episode or if you've been listening for a while or if you're a long-time listener, we appreciate all of you. Um, hope you guys have a safe and wonderful New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Day. You know, make some cool resolutions. Dude, you have a great New Year's Eve. Uh, I'll be doing... I don't know what I'm doing. Probably. And next week, we're going to talk about actually what we're excited about for 2020. That's true. And our resolutions for gaming. Sure. By the way, there's some awesome games coming that I'm really excited for, and I, I can't wait to talk about it. I, I feel like this year had some great games, but a lot of them like, weren't the type of games I love. Yes. Next year's going to be different. So, really All excited. Right, well, this has been episode 239. Thank you, guys. Hope you guys have a wonderful first time. Thank you, and all that fun stuff. And everything that goes with it, and stay safe, and see you guys next week. Yeah, bye. Bye, everybody.